how to move on from the wrong hire. And again, this is the part where we will share different stories from clients of ours. I'm sure that's one that you can all relate to. If, if, if you ever hired somebody or hired multiple people, chances are you've known sometime when that person's really been the wrong hire. And how do you how do you move on from that person? This, it, it can be tough. And it was tough for this client of ours as well, kind of going through that. And a couple of things that we always like to, to reinforce during during this this segment. One is that we talk about a small business. We're talking about usually anywhere from one to twenty five employees, and we use use our seven keys to success to coach our clients through. And if you go to our website at maximumvp.com, and there's a there's a, a menu item there called the MVP Playbook. If you click on that, you'll see a a, a link for the seven keys to success, and there's a nice graphic there that kind of lays out what those seven keys are. And a couple that, that relate to this are the organization and profit plans as well as leadership. So we had a client who was hired a young professional. He's looking to develop this person into more of a production role. So when we talk about business, in addition to our seven keys, we have our three circles. And the three circles are the product or service, marketing and sales, and, and, and the, the administrative stuff. Those three circles represent everything that could conceivably go on in your business. Right. Stop and think of the power of that. Everything in one simple visual. And most of it starts around the product or service. There's an expertise there, or knowledge there. And that's often the case when you're hiring somebody too. Usually the first hires tend to be folks more in that product or service area. I mean, they don't worry about the marketing or sales per se or the administrative stuff. It's, it's really more making sure you have the right folks from the product and service standpoint on board. And so th th that was the case here too. He's bringing this person on board as more in the production role and that person then kind of morphed into more of a marketing and sales role and then eventually just became more of a sales role but it just wasn't working and you know what happened was when, when you have somebody in that more that marketing and sales role and it's not working that can be tough because the pipeline for new business starts to kind of dry up mm -hmm. and what happened was this became very very emotional for the for, for the owner you know the owner felt personally responsible for trying to develop this young professional and it took nearly a year to pull the trigger on this person. Even though we'd known for a while, he's trying to move the person from one seat to the other and trying to, you know, trying to put him in, in a different seat to see if that would work. And it just wasn't, you know, no matter where no, they no, put this person, was it just the, wasn't the, working. That was the, the behavior style of this owner, more so than anything else. And he felt very guilty. Yeah, he felt very, very, it was a very difficult move for him. And I think that's often the case with business owners. You know, it's not easy letting somebody go, and it's not easy telling somebody something that's critical of their performance. So we tend to dodge it, and you know, you, it becomes, I guess, easier only from a standpoint of experience the more you do it. But it's a difficult process, and for some people it's almost impossible. Yeah, people talk about leadership a lot, and what does that mean? And it can often be a very, uh, very sexy, attractive thing to be known as a good leader. You know, but leadership's tough at times, especially when it comes to the, to, the, to some of the, the tougher choices on people. And so, uh, having those those difficult discussions. But I think first off, first off, one of the key roles of a leader is to admit when you made a mistake. And it's it's often very tough for our culture to admit that you're wrong. Yeah, very much so. And it can become very tough when you're the leader and the owner of an organization to admit that you made a mistake. Because, you know, whether it's conscious or unconscious, many of the folks, or subconscious, opposed to unconscious, but uh, many of the folks will think that you have all the answers as the owner, not realizing that you make a lot of mistakes along the way. It's, you, know, you have to be comfortable with that and, and know that you're gonna make mistakes. That's part of that. That's part of what you get with being an owner and, and getting in that leadership role. So be able to, to admit those kind of mistakes. So it took this owner nearly a year. Jack talked about his style. His style was very, very reserved, uh, more task oriented. You know, so the people side was not something he really liked anyway. Um, but to have those difficult conversations or to be able to admit making a mistake and being wrong is also, also very difficult for that particular disc style. And Disc style, wait a minute. Yes. See, I'm listening. I'm, I'm listening. When I listen, I learn things. So you know what DISC is all about, right, Jack? I do, yeah. So you got those four behavior styles of D, I, S, and C, and the, the C is more reserved and more task-focused, which is where this person was. And so they don't like to admit, to admit when they're wrong. They, cause again, they, 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 and these are people in your life who are typically right all the time, because when they do speak up, usually they tend to be right. Um, but the people side is very draining for them, especially if, they, you know, if they're having have to have difficult conversations. 
So, after about a year, kind of going back and forth, you know, this was, like I said, you know, to Jack and I became apparent pretty quickly, but again, part of our coaching is to help coach folks through this. And, and one of the things we learned early on in our coaching practice is we have to be very patient with yeah, folks. Yeah, you just can't ram these things through. You, you see it, and it's very frustrating that you can't implement it. We, you know, there's no portal that we can plug in and, and say, okay, when you come back Monday, you're going to have this life's experience here, and the next one, the next time you got to do it, it'll be easier. It doesn't work like that, as you all well know. Right. So a big part of what we do in our coaching isn't telling people what to do. It's helping them discover things. And then once they do discover it, it's helping them with the how that Jack always talks about, which is the how part. Of how do I kind of work through this? How do I have this kind of discussion? A lot of the role-playing and practicing for those, those difficult discussions, it's tough when you, when, you, when you haven't fired somebody before. That first person you fire, I guarantee everybody listening today, you recall that. If I'm talking about it, you can almost probably feel that that knot in your stomach. You know, you maybe you're losing color in your face because you you're feeling what it was like to be in that situation again. Yeah, that's so so true. You can you can vividly I can vividly recall the first person I fired, and that's yeah, it's like uh, assassination of a president. It's like uh, you know so many so many big events in in your life, and that's a big one. And it's it's one thing when, when when you know you're in a bigger corporation you have to terminate somebody that maybe you weren't you know that you didn't let's say hire or, or bring bring on board it's altogether different when it's your company and you probably brought this person on board and you got to again admit that you made a mistake and not quite the right fit and just be able to kind of move on so it took about a year for this owner to kind of go to, to go through that process of, uh, of discovery to realize that this was this was the, the wrong person and helped kind of move on. And doing it, we always try to use this phrase of what's best for the organization. To yep. keep it at a very high level and to try to take as much emotion out of it as we can. So he's able to make that move after about a year. And it went pretty well. I mean, to the point now where it's been, it's been, been, you know, been, been almost a year now since, since this happened. And the relationship is still pretty good between you know, this owner and the former employee. To the point where they're, they're still in contact of talking about things. I think it's rarely a surprise to somebody when you, you had a discussion of, hey, it's time to kind of break. You know, it's not the right fit. They know it, that, 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 that it's not quite the right fit, too. So it's not like it's, it's rare that it's, a, that it's a total surprise to people. So I think in this case, it wasn't a surprise for this person either. It's a matter of, okay, one, if, the, if the boss isn't going to make the, 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 the move, well, we'll, we'll kind of keep holding on. So um, in the, you know, within the first six months of when you know, this person was let go, the owner stepped back into that role and got the pipeline kind of filled up again. It took a, it, again, it took a good six months to get things kind of filled back up again. But things are back to where things are, are are going very very well, and it for the for the owner, you know, it, he you know he felt it personally from the standpoint is his personal draws each month were getting delayed. All of a sudden, the, the money wasn't there anymore. That, that often that becomes a, a big impetus, that's, right? That's, for making these things kind that's of happen. where it starts to hit home, right? And uh, that was a pretty high high paid employee, and it had an impact where we were in the development and evolution of the company. Yeah. So, so he's moved on. The, the company is, is doing very well right now, in position for fantastic growth. Um, they're, they're making a profit again. You know, this last part of the of, of this year, in position for fantastic growth going forward. But if he had made the, the the choice earlier, he could have avoided some of the pain. But some of the the, the lessons you have to learn, you know, through your own pains and struggles. So we kind of see it and coach people through what you know. What do you do when you're there? All right. So we we appreciate you being a part of the show again today and and, and listening. To